Hello and welcome back to Steam with Steve. Today we're going to go through an introductory lesson where I'm going to give you an overview of everything that I will be covering this term with inside of the computer science course that we'll be doing. So let's jump on in. To the start, welcome. I love teaching this course. Computer science is my passion. Uh, I've been doing this game for about 20 years and it's so much fun seeing students go from not understanding how to program all the way through after the end of the year knowing how to is a really big god's for me so first of all let's do a little bit of view who i am and where i come from um so i've been teaching for like i said over 20 years um my background with education wise is i've studied at somerset college way 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 back on the gold coast uh, i went to bond university to computer science course then i started at griffith to do a postgrad diploma of education then unsw for an mba QUT for a Master's of Education. My employment, I've worked as a teacher at Snowy Mountains Grammar School, which I'm just starting up. Uh, Linda's Farming Grammar School on Gold Coast, with Sun Somerset College as well. And then Beijing National Day School over in China. I also worked way, way, way back in the day at St. Stephen's College, which was a lot of fun. Then worked as a maths tutor and home automation installer, uh, a video games tester, and then also a tool guide up, up in Cairns. My interests, I uh, love computer games, obviously, being a computer nerd, uh, yoga, rugby, and a bit of surfing. So that's a little bit about me. Uh, this introductory lesson that I run inside the class is basically allowing you to uh, share who you are and where you come from. Um, and I'm a really big fan of making sure that there's that sort of understanding where everyone comes from. So one of the questions that I always ask in my class is what's the craziest thing that you've ever done? It's one of the forms they get to fill in. So this is the craziest thing that I've ever done. So many, many years, way, way back uh, when I was working as a tour guide up in Cairns, I uh, had the opportunity to do uh, a bungee jump, which is what you're watching here. Um, I did three of them, and then the last one I actually got to upgrade and do a BMX bungee jump. So a little bit weird, a little bit random, but it was a lot of fun. So the idea is you had the BMX bike and then had to run off the top of the ramp. So here I go. Cool. So, <laughs> a little bit random. Um, yes, the bike was all harnessed in, and it was pretty cool. I had a really big class with that. So, the teaching mission that I have, and this has been the same ever since I started, is making sure to empower students to achieve excellence with the use of edutainment. So, what edutainment means? It's a it's a merged term. So, basically, you have education, you have entertainment, and then in the middle, you have education. So I love using YouTubes, I love using PowerPoints, trying to make things a bit more interactive. Um, yeah, so my, my goal has always been that, and then that's what I try and do. Um, I've been in the game, like I said, for over 20 years, so I've run touch football clubs, um, math class, uh, math clubs, the rugby club, um, robotics, I've done a whole heap of different things all over the years. Uh, my favorite thing that I'm pretty proud of is uh, finishing the 96k kilometer uh, so 96 kilometer uh, ultra marathon with Dakota, I took four students on that, uh, which was a bit of a buzz. Um, so I've done that a couple of times. And yeah, that's a little bit about where I come from. I only have one initiative for the class that I run. And it's really, really simple. When you're talking, I'll always listen to what you have to say. But when I'm talking, you need to listen to me. Um, that's just so that we keep that fairness and making sure that the class runs smoothly. Um, I'm a really big fan of respect as well. So making sure that that sort of balance happens. Inside the class, um, I'm a big fan also of the class deppy. So that the idea behind that is if you take the initiative and you finish a task early, please try and help the fellow classmates out. So making sure that everyone else is sort of up to your level is really important because if, if you're helping others, it saves me time running around the class. So if you can help three people, um, that, that's huge for me personally. So uh, the really big thing with that is making sure that you don't just take the, the keyboard off them or the, uh, the written assignment part and doing it for them. So don't just do it for them, but show and talk to them about how to do it. That's the important part as a class deputy. So homework, I know it's one of those sort of um, historically not so fun parts, but it basically homework is used to fight this forgetting curve. So the idea is with this curve is immediately after you finish it, um, learning something, you have 100% retention of it. But after 20 minutes, that automatically drops down to 60%. And if we go an hour, that drops down to 50% of what you've covered. So there's a really big jump that happens. The idea behind homework is it actually pushes it back up to that 100% and then 
changes the way that that curves or looks. But it's really important to be consistent with this. Um, and it doesn't have to be arduous, it's quite a simple process. For me personally, I've made 15 minute lessons, uh, homework lessons after the class, so that you can keep remembering all the key concepts that we've covered. While we're learning programming, it's really important to keep that consistency happening, uh, because if you don't do it, the, the it gets quite um, intense, and then you're not quite sure what you're doing, and then there's confusion. And it also gives you a really good um, understanding whether or not you understand the concepts that we've covered. So they're only 15 minute homeworks um, that are done after each lesson. Preferably you try and do it the day after. So within the 24 hour period so that you get that, um, that, that boost back up on the curve. And it's due at the end of the, each week. So the idea is, I understand that sometimes cricket, rugby, netball, there's all those different things going on at the same time. So for me personally, I'm happy for you to submit that week. Assignments, so we have uh, two assignments throughout this year. Um, all the electronic work is going to be submitted by the learning management system and needs to be at 9pm of the due date. So make sure that you've got a very clear um, assignment that's been submitted and yeah, make sure it's all uploaded on there. But two weeks before we have a thing called the fortnightly prelim. Um, basically you need to submit what, where you're up to, a bit of feedback so we can sit down and go through how you're going. Um, that's worked really well for me in the past so that there's no sort of blindsidedness and we're not quite sure who's where you're up to. Um, so if you fail to hand in your assignment on time, this is what I usually mark. Instead, please don't hand in blank assignments. Really important. One of those few uh, things that really do annoy me. Um, so what audience should you be targeting your media towards? Well, I'm a big fan of Disney Standard. So for me, what that means is a Disney Standard um, assignment is that it's of high quality, kid friendly and um, it's basically available by everyone so everyone sort of can sort of play around with the, the game that you build or, or the um, robot that you make those are the things that we need to think about so always ask yourself is it Disney standard okay so common question I always get is what if I don't want to make it um, Disney standard I want a really gory game or all those type of things uh, it's really important that we don't do that so uh, we try and make these games fun we try and also be mindful and respectful of others. So last sort of things that I need to cover. So a little bit of a nerd overview. Obviously, I love studying. So there's a few different qualifications that I have, but also the programming languages that I know. So I know probably about 11 different programming languages, uh, ranging from Visual Basic, Python, Java, C Sharp, and C. Um, these languages basically inter interlace with each other. So the common thing that I talk about with students is when you learn your first language, it does take a lot. So to learn a, a language really, really well, probably takes about a year to master it. But then when you learn the next language, it's actually significantly easier. So instead of a year, it might only take six months. And then when you learn that third language, it might only take you a month. And then now it probably takes about a week for me to learn and pick up a language and sort of understand things. Because what you'll find is things are interlaced. So there's an if statement, but it's just the way that the if statement's been written is slightly different. Can we use ChatGPT? Um, absolutely. More than a, I'm a huge fan of using AI and keeping up with the technology, but we need to be mindful that ChatGPT is a tool. Okay? So much like a calculator when it came out and did math, that's the same as what like your ChatGPT is. So if you just get it to write the assignment for you and press enter, uh, that's not really the purpose of it. But if you use it as a questioning tool, we ask, I'm not quite sure what this part of the code means. Can you explain it to me? That to me is a significant advantage and that's something that I would love for you to do. And that ties in perfectly into the weekly coding board challenge that we'll be doing. So the idea behind this is uh, we have a challenge for each week and then you need to try and go off and do that challenge. Um, coding war is awesome. Basically it ranks you up. It's like an online game where you try and uh, do these different challenges and try and build the code that goes with it, um, which we'll be going through way more in depth in the class. So the big question, why do we want to study computer science? Well, I, I've, I'm a big fan of this. So I believe it's because you learn how to analyze real world problems and to develop and reason solutions. So with the incoming of AI, a lot of people are sort of freaking out with this. I think it's exciting times because what's going to happen now is the people that understand computer science are going to have a huge advantage of others. And yeah, basically you'll under, you'll know how the computer thinks so that you're able to sort of manipulate it and get it going uh, to help whatever your sort of needs are as well. 
the programming languages that we're going to cover inside of this course in year a we're going to do python so we're going to learn uh, retro gaming with pygame then we're going to learn uh, micromel and robotics where we're going to learn how to uh, code the robot to do a little scenario and at the end we'll do uh, for the next year year b we'll be doing gd script so we're learning the dot uh, which is very similar to python it's slightly different but there's a lot of overlap and then at the end of that we'll do some machine learning with AWS. AWS Deep Racer. Very important as a programmer, you will fail a lot and it does get a bit arduous. So sometimes it might be as simple as missing a semicolon. And if you forget that, the whole program doesn't work. So unlike English, where if you forget a full stop at the end of the sentence, you can still sort of work out what happens. Programming can get a bit um, uh, stressful because you're focused on forgetting one thing. It's really important though that the you trust in the process. So we have a thing called an IDE, which tells you the feedback and says, well, this is where the problem is. And you need to fix it in that space. Um, and we need to sort of lean into that. So instead of sort of freaking out and saying, oh, I suck at programming, da, 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 you need to have this mindset of failure is not falling down, but refusing to get up. So if you've, if the semicolon was missing, that's fine. It's not going to be the end of the world. You just need to go find where it needs to go and sort of put it in. The other way that I like saying that is sucking at something is the first step to becoming sort of good at something. Right? So we all, when we're first learning a skill, it is quite intense. And the, the point is the more you practice it, the better you become. So I'm a really big fan of the cycle of respect. Um, this is sort of the way I try to run all my classes and it starts off really small like this and then it gets bigger and bigger as we go. So when we start cycle, we have respect for others. We acknowledge their potential. They start using their abilities well, which creates meaning and purpose, letting people to give their best and then fully recognize people's contributions. And then you start having respect for others. And then that slowly gets bigger and bigger and bigger until you have this massive circle going along with everyone inside the class. So um, you don't get respect because you want it, you get respect because you earn it. And, and I'm really big fan of this. So what I always do in every single class that I've ever run is I do the name game. And what happens is by the end of this lesson, um, when I'm running it, I'll learn everyone's name. And while I'm doing that, basically you guys can fill in that sheet so I can get a little, a little bit more about who you are. Um, if I do forget your name as well throughout the course, you get three chances and I will owe you a can of soft drink as well. If I forget. Okay, so really big fan on that. Hopefully that's giving you a bit of oversight of what happens inside this course. Um, really big keen awesome. this is going to be awesome um computer science is one of the, the most growing and fantastic subjects that you should be choosing and hopefully you'll enjoy it as much as i enjoy teaching thank you very much for watching hopefully see you soon adios